Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for our webinar today. We're going to get started in just a moment or two. We're going to give people who are joining us a moment to successfully get in the virtual room. If you're just joining us, it's now one past the hour. We're going to give it just another moment to allow everyone who seems to be joining us a second to get settled virtually. Thanks for joining us and we'll get started shortly. Hello, everyone. We appreciate you joining us this afternoon, and we're going to get started in just a moment or two. We've still got some people coming online, so we'll give it just another moment, and then we'll get started. Good afternoon, everyone, or morning or evening, depending upon where you are. Thanks for joining us for this next session in our webinar series of Exploring on Base with TSE. This afternoon, we're going to be discussing human resources applications for this fabulous tool set, and Jack Roberts will be presenting to us. Before we get started, I'd like to do a 
few brief introductions around the virtual room. Hopefully some of these faces are familiar to you by now. Starting off with Jack Roberts, who is our founder, CEO, and fearless leader at TSC. This is Jamin Steelman speaking, and I, along with us, we have Tom Talamentez, the VP of Sales and Marketing at TSC. Joining us today and our sponsor is Scott Francis, who's a technology evangelist with Fujitsu. And rounding out the TSC team supporting the webinar today is Heather Heath, who is our marketing coordinator. On the agenda today, we have introductions, which we've done, and then we're going to go through some key areas that we see as good use cases in within HR for the OnBase platform. We're going to touch on each of these at a high level, but as you might imagine, there are, is a lot of depth possible here. So we would love to hear back from you if you see an area that you would like to have a deeper dive discussion or have questions about integrations possible with your HRIS or certain areas between your hire to retire processes in HR that might be applicable use cases for some of the strengths of OnBase. And with that, I will hand it over to Jack Roberts to walk us through these areas. Jack? Awesome. Thanks, Jamin. Appreciate it. So before we get really involved in today's presentation, Hey, just Jack, know I think we... you're still muted. I'm muted? Nope, we're able to hear him all right. Yeah, okay. Thought so. All right. So before we get started today, just want to make sure that everyone knows you're welcome to ask questions. We have the One questions moment. and answer session, and then we will go forward and uh, always take on additional options for doing custom demonstrations or more in-depth demonstrations, if you will, after the fact. We look forward to finding out what you're interested in, and away we go. All right, so today we're just talking about OnBase and how it can be one platform where you can cover all of your needs when it comes to human resources, as well as many other departments. We mentioned the topics we're gonna to discuss today. They are listed right above. You'll see that we have this all coming up with multiple sections to talk about that going forward. We like to wow you with all kinds of cool little graphics. So here you go, you can see that there's plenty of security. That's one of the biggest things that people have questions about when it comes to HR is, hey, we're used to having this paper, holding on to it, we can lock it up and not have anybody have access to it. In reality, we can get much better security when we have everything stored digitally and have the power of OnBase to be able to secure everything for us. We have plenty of integrations. We're gonna discuss those in a minute. As you'll see, we, we can integrate with some of the most, of the biggest HRIS systems that are out there. And then going forward, you'll see that mobile is a big key because as they get the millennials on and everybody these days is so used to having their smartphones that they wanna be able to have quick access and you need to be able to do that. And it's very difficult to do that with paper. All right, so it used to be that we would talk about file cabinets, boxes, and all the like. Now we're talking about how does that work when you have things that are in Word that get emailed around, then we put those in the filing cabinets. You know, the one of the biggest pet peeves that I have being in this industry for so long is when you have an email and you print it out. Uh, <laughs> it's ironic that my wife does that all the time, given that I've been in this industry for over 20 years. Sometimes I think she does it just to get a rise out of me, but it is what it is. Uh, we like to be able to then integrate with HRIS systems, so that's human resources information systems, but you'll need to make sure you have all these different options. How do you go forward and find when it's paper-based or even partially paper, partially inside of Word documents or Excel, how do you find your information? Well, it's not very convenient and with the COVID teaching us anything, we need to be remote and have access to all of our information at the tip of our fingertips, if you will, and not be able, reliant on having to go to the office and get to the paper and find different things. So now we're left with all kinds of good stuff. We'll see that in the ECM world, we have our knowledge workers that are out there and we only, we're not only limited now to just paper world, and spreadsheets and Word documents, we actually have the ability to go out and pull in emails and photos and make sure that anything that may happen with regards to conversations going back and forth that may be deemed as a record that we need to store that, we wanna make sure we capture everything. If we start having employee grievances and any kind of 
IM messages back and forth. We want to really make sure we capture everything so it's there because if it's if it's presented and the employee has access to it, then you better believe that the management team better have access to it and store it and have a background story for it. So this is why we like to look at after the fact, once you implement an ECM product for the actual HR world, then you get into a nice way to capture all this information, make it quick and easy to search. Just like you think about going out to Google and doing a quick search for any word or phrase, that's the kind of power you need for OnBase going forward. So we talk about employee file management. This is the first topic we're gonna dive into. You'll see that really we're taking away the old documents and paper-based forms and all that stuff, and we're really gonna make it all digital, make it secure, make it convenient to access. But on top of that, we also need to think about the document retention. So one of the biggest things we get into with HR solutions is active employees versus separated employees. And how do we retain those documents? Well, if they're a part of e-discovery for litigation purposes and they're past the retention life, they're still discoverable. So you still have to make sure you dispose of those. Otherwise, they'll be brought up in court. So retention is very positive and something that you need to really embrace. We talk about different integrations with HRIS systems. Well, we talk about from on-base perspective, we can integrate easily out of Outlook as a native functionality that you can do and, and go forward and have OnBase be able to ingest emails, be able to get to your OnBase client from the Outlook client and do workflow all from right within Outlook. But we talk about specific HRS systems. There's PeopleSoft, ADP, Lawson, you name it. We've done those integrations. We're doing this for over 20 years. We've had the opportunity to really go in and be in depth. Some people simply want a feed from say ADP where all we're doing is getting our employee ID, the employee information like the status and their hire date, if they have a term date, all that kind of stuff, that comes across. We can utilize that data to go forward. So the record of truth would really be like a PeopleSoft or ADP, but as we get that information, OnBase then goes in and updates all of their documents. One of the key phrases you may hear, it's a buzz term in the market these days, is RPA. People don't usually associate RPA with a remote process automation with HR, but it's really a very good use case. When you think about doing background checks or some kind of automated task that basically you're doing that same thing over and over and over again, well, we can train a bot to do that very same thing. If you want to go out, log into a website, fill in some information, capture what's there, bring it back, and then store it into OnBase. So RPA is another good topic that we can really get in and talk to you about a little further. An inherent feature to OnBase really is the ability to do foldering. And you can do foldering or at the top in the red square, you see where we have a specific employee. In this case, it's Jason Knight. And you'll see that just by looking at this, we can really quickly see what's in the system and what's missing. So we can see the direct deposit forms not found, emergency medical information is not found, uh, but we know it's out there and we can have access to it. That's if I physically look at this, this person's chart and see what's there. But on the right hand side, notice we've got the actual tabs, just like we would in a filing cabinet, where we could have the application information as it comes in, if we have any correspondence with said person, and then finally their actual employment documents. So we can have full history from when they initially applied all the way through to the time that they're an employee and or if they separate from the company. You'll hear me kind of go back and forth. I try to use the word separate because that's the politically correct friendly term we like to use instead of saying someone's terminated, that sounds so harsh. So we're saying they've been separated from the company. So what does that get us? Uh, we've been hammering a lot on security, but this auto foldering is great because as, as a new applicant comes in, they can automatically have a folder structure set up just like you saw previously, and it'll create that folder for them. And as they go through the hiring process, should they get hired, we can automatically have all of their documents captured, any correspondence we had back and forth with them captured, and it'll be perfectly placed in each of those related tabs. Now note, those tabs were ones that we use by default. You can have whatever tabs you want. They can be named whatever you want, as many or as few as you want. So don't think anything you see today is what is there and what has to be. It is all just a good example of what to do from a high level purpose. A big key feature is the audit trail. Everything in OnBase is 
fully tracked. So you have the history between when that particular document or that record came into play, who touched it, if anybody were to email it out, print it, add a note to it, electronic note to it, all of that is captured right away. You mentioned easy retrieval, so you can not only find it by way of filing cabinets, you could go out and find it by one of what's the keywords, some of your metadata, so if you had the person's name you're looking for, or we can even do more specific like custom queries to say, show me all active employees that are currently out there. And one of the most strongest parts of OnBase is the reporting. We can show quickly what our employees are doing. We can see what areas are being onboarded right now for what positions are active, where do we need to hire, and then we can see all of this again from the mobile. So it's very, very powerful in a way that we should all start thinking about is using our, our phones, using our tablets, as well as our laptops as we go forward, especially in this new world. So why does it matter? You think of these things and say, well, what's, what's the point of all of this? Really, we're asked to do more as each individual person to do more with less, meaning we have so many open positions out there and there's so many people that aren't returning to the workforce for whatever reason, we need to be able to work smarter, not harder. And so with that, we're trying to enhance our user experience, make sure we can quickly identify anything that's missing, build in those integrations so we're not duplicating efforts and we always have our whatever application of truth whether that be on base or whether that be some other thing like a Lawson and we get that information from Lawson or whatever HRIS system, we want to make sure we have that built in. We have to have the security. Everything has to be confidential. Those two things really go together. But then we talk about reporting and we're going to see some examples of that coming up. This to me is epic because you see a person so buried in paper, they don't even know what where to start you know you kind of feel overwhelmed well that's a great picture to say yep this is a typical back in the day hr nightmare but we want to talk about how to go forward and make sure that we just have nothing but our laptop maybe a scanner next to us and away we go we'll see how we can eliminate all these paper storage costs and really get into the ability of capturing everything having it at our fingertips instead of getting up out of our desk and going to find it in a filing cabinet Moving on to our next topic, that's our records management and risk mitigation. You'll see as part of OnBase, you can have the records management module. And with that module, you have the ability to place things on hold and view all your holds. So if you have an employee that's going through a, a litigation hold, for instance, like they've been separated from the company, but you don't want their time to expire and their records get expunged, we can put everything on hold. It's very common to have what's called a uniform or an e-form that someone in HR can fill out saying, okay, we received uh, a litigation notice for said customer or said ex-employee, in this case, Ashton Anderson. So we want to go in, we can fill out a form, says here's the name, populate the ID, and put all associated records to this person on a litigation hold so that we don't worry about what happens to it and it don't get expunged while we're in the middle of litigation. So again, this is a nice, easy way to see the records management module built into the whole auto foldering. As we look, here's an example. You place it on hold, you'll see a little drop down there for the hold for litigation and the reasons. These can be pre-populated, so we can list all of the most common ones that are out there, and then they pick, or you can even have an other reason, uh, an other option in the drop down, and fill in the reason manually but these are your most common reasons we'll put in for you automatically and let you select it. We wanna to try to keep as many variants out and make everything straightforward. A powerful thing in OnBase is the exception reports. It's, it's not used in nearly as many instances as we prefer because I showed you a way to go out and find what's missing if I'm looking at a file by file and the person's file and saying, oh, I can see this is missing. But in reality, if we wanted to run the exception reports module inside of OnBase, I can get one nice report that shows me right away, oh, I'm missing all these documents and it shows the specific person we're missing it for. So it's a great way to have it automated and sent out to you. Moving right along, policy and procedures. 
Jamin, did there, did I see a question come in? Are you trying to flag me down? No, I will definitely let you know. <laughs> I have faith. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So it used to be we had trouble with defining our policies and someone may write it and someone else may come in and, and have their own version of the policy. So each department may have different policies when in reality they should be more centralized and we make sure there's no overlap and make sure one department doesn't actually conflict with another department's policies. When a person moved from one department to another, we really want to make sure we're being consistent all the way through. So we really want to make sure we have access, the employees have access to that, they've acknowledged those policies and procedures, and we can then report on those. Likewise, we want to give them the ability to say, I need to test your knowledge on this. I want to make sure you just didn't scroll through and say, okay, a lot of us do that when it comes time to license agreements on software. We say, okay, scroll through the end. Now I can click on okay to continue. Great. You don't want your employees necessarily always doing that because you really want them to know what's there because if we come back into any kind of litigation again, we're always talking about potentially the worst case scenario. We need to ask them some questions. So part of the on-base module of DKT is also the compliance. So document knowledge transfer and compliance where we can actually test them on things. So maybe we had a certain OSHA requirement that we needed to have the employees know what's there. So we can actually go out and test them, ask them three or four or five questions and make sure that they actually read through it and know the answers. As we go through, you'll see that we're going to use a policy to be able to include workflow for approvals and be able to go out and actually work with these things, have a full dashboard to know who actually acknowledged, who is delinquent, and then also have the ability to go out and see what documents are published and what's the latest version to make sure we're publishing out the latest and greatest for everyone. You'll see the, the email is the big key. We're going to email out everybody a link saying, please go out into OnBase. The link, just follow this link. It'll take you into OnBase, and you'll see a web browser that they can do, or it can take them right into the Unity client, and they can fill this out. The Unity client is great if you have it installed. The web browser is a really good function. It's very clean, and you can see a lot of different features. There's, there's reasons why we like to pick on each one. You know, the unit client is very rich and thick. A lot of times people are in that client uh, all day long, but then you get your occasional users that may be just in and out. Those are perfect for the web. And then sometimes we need to have a zero footprint, so we send everything to the web client. It just depends on what you may have and what you need. So we're going to show you a couple examples. This is an example of the document knowledge transfer module within the OnBase Unity client. You'll see that I log in, it'll prompt me for It'll give me a little prompt saying, you are delinquent on XYZ, please go fill it out. You'll see that I have the documents. If I have to have any reference documents, sometimes we're reading a like an employee handbook and it may have an appendix and we need to go and look at the appendix to really understand what it's saying that we're doing in addition to. You can have all that. So all these are out there for you. And then you have a place for any acknowledged documents or any uh, rejected documents if you need to go out and reject it. Do note that we have the compliance part where you can test them if you wanted to go through and test and see what they did as far as reading this. We like it because we can go in and quickly see who's acknowledged, who's delinquent, and we can automatically send out emails after X amount of time saying, okay, you're delinquent on this, please go in and fill it out right away. We can have workflows set up so it automatically emails out if they're delinquent after X amount of time. And then if we remind them, say three times, and they still haven't done it, then it could be sent to their manager. An email could be sent to their manager saying, uh, in this case, Victor Price is delinquent. He hasn't done any of his documents. Please get with him and understand why he has not went in and looked at any of his documents. This is a view of the web client and how you can see how it all works. But one of the cool things that most people don't know from the web client itself is where you can go in and email delinquent users. You can change your actual users of record, but you can export out the report so you can see in one spot what documents are out there, what's the latest version, who's delinquent, who's not, and you can have it all built out in Excel. And then you can take it from there and do whatever you want with it. And however, we're used to working with documents. But the cool thing is, once you do that report, it could also be a record inside of OnBase, so you could not only 
have that report, but you can store that as a document back into OnBase to show, okay, at this time, this was a snapshot in time of what we have and where we're at. So once we implement and truly have OnBase in here, we can see that we have one location to store everything, one location to be able to have an author publish it out. And you can even use workflow to go through and make sure that everybody agrees that this is what we want to publish. So maybe you have multiple authors, they go through a workflow to have multiple reviews, and then finally we get to the published version. And then next year, maybe we have to update that document. So it can go through another workflow to say, okay, every year we have to have this thing signed off on. We add any changes to it, it goes through the workflow, gets approved, now we're on version two, and that gets published. We have full acknowledgement tracking to make sure we know who's there, who signed it, who approved it, who didn't, or who tried to reject it and why. And then we can also email out to anyone that's delinquent on signing documents to make sure they go in and accept those right away. So really, why is it important? We really find that in HR, we have to be compliant. It all comes back down to litigations and how things work with everything going on right now in the world we see that everybody is turning over you're seeing a lot of turnover in your onboarding process and your offboarding process is now way bigger than it ever has been and we're seeing much more volume so with that we need to make sure we're making everything as smooth as possible we can send out a quick email to all of our delinquent users instead of going in one by one looking at their file saying oh they didn't sign this or they didn't sign off on the handbook and keeping a manual spreadsheet of this we can actually build it into the system so you click once and it emails everybody that's delinquent. We mentioned onboarding and offboarding quite a bit. Let's talk about it. We really need to make sure we're protecting our investment as we go and our employees are our most valuable portion of any company. So we want to make sure that we engage and bring on new employees. But we want to retain those employees and make sure we're rewarding them. So if they're doing good things, we want to have the system built in to have, actually go out and reward them for positive values that they're doing and bring into the company likewise we need to flip it on the other side if there's any grievances or anything we need to make sure we're addressing those right away we build into our retention policy aspects of all of our employees to make sure if they're active or if they're separated we can keep those records around for as long as need be and afterwards we can get rid of those and expunge those records one thing we didn't mention about the records management module is that it can actually give you a record of destruction so that if you go in and you need to have for the court purposes a, a record of destruction sometimes that's required so if i go in and say i had an employee that was separated from the company 10 years ago i will expunge all of their records from the system but i'll put in this actual uh, policy that shows me a record of destruction so i can show that i actually got rid of those files and they're all there but i purposely got rid of them based on our policies you'll see some important facts here i think the biggest thing is it's interesting that 59 percent of all new employees are gone within the first year why is that well with that scenario we have to ask not only why but how are we going to handle that that's almost 60 percent of our workforce is going to turn over and this isn't something that i made up off the top of my head it's actually part of the Bureau of Labor Statistics that's reporting this and saying 59% of all new employees are gone after the first year. So you can just think about onboarding and offboarding, how important that really is to really get that nailed down. With the millennial, you know, uh, surpass Gen X in this whole thing with the workforce, we're really looking at how this comes out. And millennials really are different. And a lot of us weren't raised where we actually grew up with a cell phone. Well, now it's pretty ironic that kids are one, two years old and they've already got a device in their hand. And a lot of them can use it better than some of the people that we work with on a daily basis. So they're very tech savvy. And they have a lot of ways to have opinions, if you will, and strong opinions about, oh, well, you know, why am I why am I going backwards in time? And why am I filling out this paper? You're going to send me a paper and I got to fill it out and you want me to fax it? How do I fax it? You know, fax is sometimes a, a dirty word to these younger kids, and we have to make sure we're going through and building all this out and making a big first impression. 
So as we go through, uh, we'll actually have the ability for employee onboarding to automatically assign tasks. This is where we get into the power not only of workflow, but you can use what's called work view to build more of a case management system that can go forward and have every record you could have with a with an actual employee documented and have a checklist for the onboarding process, have a checklist for the offboarding process and make sure that those are getting followed. And you can also have it by who is there, who did it, when do they do it, and if there are any notes associated with that. Part of our whole process is we want to automate this. So we don't want to typically pick up the phone anymore and call somebody. Most people are going to want an email or even a text that says, congratulations, you've been hired, thank you for attending, or thank you for uh, applying. We are so happy to have you on board. Give them an email link, and they can actually link right onto the portal. Very common anymore for all of our solutions that we're doing this, that we're actually sending out emails and or texts, giving them links to go log in. So this I'm going to show you is an example of what you could do off of your intranet site or even off of the public facing site. But uh, typically we think about this as a process that if I want to log in on my intranet site, maybe we use SharePoint as our way to communicate and host our intranet site. But if I go in, I can actually look, and this is an on-base screen. This is what's called status view, part of what comes with the web server. You'll notice the top left corner, there's a welcome video. You're welcoming them. Now they have a, a login. They can come in. They get some instructions in the top right corner. I'm going clockwise. So the next one is introduction for new hire forms. Tells them, hey, you need to fill these out. You can see the new hire forms right there uh, that they can fill out. If they have any information already done, you see the forms that are already complete. Hopefully you see my mouse. You can see these are complete and they still need to click on the W4 to fill that out. Some more policy instructions. And then we mentioned document knowledge transfer quite a bit. Here are our actual things that they need to go and acknowledge. So right from the, from the web, we can pull this up and have them acknowledge everything we need so the day they start, they're hitting the ground running and not going through a week worth of, oh, we still don't have these things. We don't have that signed. We, we got to have that I-9 filled out before they ever start. So just FYI, it's all there. Again, this is on base. This is status view. It's not your only way to get to these documents, but this is usually a low-hanging fruit off of another intranet site that you would get to. So just keep that in mind. So again, here's the new hire forms, and then there's our policies to acknowledge. You can do each of these little rectangles you see here. These are all what's called portlets. You can build out your own portlets or certain ones that come with it out of the box that you can implement and have all these different things available to us. But just know this is one example of what you could do. We mentioned uniform. So if a person is actually applying to your company, you can put this this uniform was created inside of the OnBase Unity client, but the cool thing is you can publish those out to an internet site or even a, a public website. So you can take the same site, I'm sorry, the same uniform and create it on base, then push it out to your website. And then once a person fills this out, it can actually push that right into OnBase. Notice we have the ability to be able to attach a resume, attach a cover letter, all in this uniform. The nice thing is we're utilizing these key values that they type in as well as the resume and the cover letter. So it's automatically getting assigned a document type and grabbing these values to, for the keywords to all of our all of our indexing for this intent of purpose is, is already done once they fill it out for us, instead of us going in and trying to fill it out. So as we start managing the entire onboarding process, we need to take a step back and say, well, where are we at in the process? we could have more than one. If it's just a one person that we're hiring at a time, that's not so bad. But if you think about a company that we may be hiring and onboarding 20, 30 people at a time, maybe we're offboarding 20 or 30 people at a time, or even hundreds at a time, you need a quick and easy way to see this stuff. So the dashboard view is outstanding. You can assign different tasks by department. So like IT would assign their Active Directory sign-in, login. Maybe they're going to assign them a, a phone extension, so on and so forth. Maybe HR has to go in and do some things. All of these are there, and they're all dynamic, meaning we help you go in and set these up, these tasks, so that you can have those and build those out to your unique hiring process. 
we'll have best practices we can tell you about and how others have done it, but ultimately it's gonna come down to what you need and how we're gonna handle this. So we'll see as an example, here we have an employee record and inside this employee record, I really wanna see what happens to this. So at the top, this is an example of, just wanna make sure everybody understands, this is a good example of using the WorkView module where we can actually build this out and we can say, okay, for this person, for Sally here, I can see an onboarding checklist. And you'll notice that these are my options at the top. Again, these are just examples that you can have set up for you, your different tasks. So if you want to compose a non-compete agreement, you can build documents right on the fly. And then if I want to look at my checklist, I can go through and make sure all these things are happening. And I can have this checklist set up so we go through, each department can do their thing, HR can review it to make sure it's there and valid, and away we go. So I just want to make sure you guys understand that this sits on top of OnBase. So this is work for you. It's a part of part of OnBase, just a different way to think about things. Perfect for those people that live in spreadsheets and access databases and try to contain information that's not necessarily document driven, like we think about with normal OnBase workflow, but you have this whole solution that you can build out to retain employee information, be able to make sure we have these checklists, use the power of OnBase for workflow and email notifications to, to send out and make sure we have reminders set up. We also want to build into this whole thing as employee evals. So 60 days out from an eval, we want to send the employee out a self-evaluation. And then 30 days out, make sure we got that value, that document back and then send it to their uh, manager and let the manager fill out the evaluation. So the day of their anniversary, we can make sure everything is there, filled out and in the system. You mentioned the dashboard effect. This is a quick and easy way to see right from work view without the reporting dashboards. This is just a work view dashboard that you can see what's out there. So you can see multiple things in a graph kind of vision, also in an actual list as you see on the bottom right. One of the cool things that has come about is we're able to email out the task list. So once something is set to be done for you, we send this out and say, okay, from an HR perspective, I want to monitor this and make sure everything is being done. So me being an HR, I want to get an email saying, okay, Active Directory, who's a system admin, who's going to do that? Uh, the system action is going to be done. And then all they have to do is click on the hyperlink. It takes them right into OnBase to fill out their portions and say they whatever record they need to update has been managed. And of course, it's all tied back to that specific user. So we would want to make sure that when they click on that, it's automatically going to populate the new hires information. And it starts building out their their file, their record for them right then and there. This screen is a little bit intimidating, but it's a great way to see what's out there. When we talk about new employee onboarding, we talk about a dashboard. Here's a way that we can see based off of how things went. I want a snapshot of how many new hires do we have by month, by department. So I can go out and see where's our biggest turnover. Why are we having so much turnover? Do we need to have an internal discussion of what's going on? Are we burning our people out? Are we making sure we're managing our processes correctly? So you can see that there's ways to view what's in on base, not only from inside of workflow queues, but more of what happened throughout time. These these reports really can tell a story, and it's really good to be able to go back and look at this over time to say, last year, what did I do in April? or in July, or in August. Now look, as it really goes up into October, November, December, we have a big hiring frenzy. Well, that's because we're seasonal. So we need to make sure we keep that in mind. So for next year, we're starting to build out trends and know what to expect. What we're trying to accomplish really is a 360 degree view of the entire process to make sure it's all there. We can really, engage with the employee and not just be picking up the phone and calling them. Most of the younger crew that are coming on these days, they prefer to have a text or an email so they can have that, um, maybe even get involved with some of the social media aspects of the, of the whole hiring process as well. We talk about automatically filling out documents. So when an employee comes in, they automatically get assigned an employee number. And then on, the employee number can then autofill a bunch of other information, which is great. Like current status of employment, if you will. Quickly identify missing documents and really make sure that as we go through these different departments, as they're interacting, 
with the new hires that they make sure they have their checklist and we can see that it's complete. All right, employee relations. This is one where OnBase has really evolved lately and some people already have this. If you have a full-blown HRS system, you may have this already taken care of. But for others, OnBase could really be your one-size-fits-all when it comes to managing the employee case. So as you go through, we have any incidents we need to capture. Maybe there's some kind of investigation or a grievance. Maybe they have some kind of complaint where you have a whistleblower. Anything you may have out there, we can capture it inside of OnBase and really make sure that we're building out all of this. Why do we do all this? Not only to make it easier for ourselves, but we have to be cognizant of the big elephant in the room, and that's lawsuits. So if we have any kind of litigation, we want to make sure we're covered. So if it wasn't documented, it didn't happen, right? We, we didn't have any way to go back and say it's our word against theirs. It's he said, she said, and that doesn't stand up in court. So we really want to make sure we have a full audit trail with full retention policies, all of our policies acknowledged. So if the person comes back and says, well, you never told me about this. We can go back and show them, oh, you, you signed off on this document. You knew this was what the case. So we look and quickly see, here's an example of an employee file. We can see their information. If they have any employee cases or whatever, we have it all in one location, right there, easy access for us. So as we go through, just to kind of give you a, a quick example of what a screen could look like, here you can see that we, uh, oops, sorry. Here you can see a screen that we have an employee case. In this case, it was type of harassment. They're filing a grievance. And what are we going to do about this? Well, we can set up a call and add that activity if we need to bring in other employees in this case you can see Dan Dobson was a witness to the whole thing we need to add any notes there's a place for documents so let's say uh, there was a photo that somebody took that they could view or even a video of that of the harassment we can add that into these cases so it's all right there self-contained and really you have one big over-encompassing case by employee that has all these different items captured this is just a good example of what you can do I won't read these to you but just see how we can go through and open a case, close a case. We need to escalate it. We may need to go through and uh, generate some kind of a PIP, Informers Improvement Plan, just to make sure everything's there. Just kind of a, a sampling set of what you could do. And then we talk about going through and potentially having OnBase then generate documents for us. A lot of times we'll have Word templates that are out there where we'll go through and need to fill out an evaluation or maybe a performance improvement plan, right? A, a PIP. Well, instead of us going out to Word and filling in this information and maybe forgetting to copy and paste something or type in the right area, we can actually use OnBase and the power of the whole document composition module to build us out. So what's our what are we doing here? The template group is employee relations. My template I want to use is the is the PIP, and I can go through. And then it says, okay, it's going to ask me. It's like a little wizard asking me questions on how do I need to fill this out. It's going to take the information that are our keywords as well as being inquisitive of what do you want to do. Example, two weeks or 30 days that we'd fill out for the unproductive behavior, and they go in and fill that out. And then finally, you can see here's the document. It got created, filled in all the magic pieces for us so that we can make sure everything is compliant. And then again, at the top, I can have the ability to accept it. So that actually stores the document inside of OnBase, puts it into their file, and could even send it out to the employee via email. We can do all kinds of different ways with that, but just know that this is the sampling set of what you could do. So as you can see, the benefits are, are very well defined. We definitely need to safeguard against any kind of legal risks. We can always report on the trends. I think that's one of the things that I've enjoyed about using OnBase for our HR system is I can see trends on when are we hiring, when are we going through and, and doing our evals. We can be forward thinking and saying, okay, I need to look at anniversaries. Who has anniversaries coming up with the company in the next two months? And easily see that with a report inside of OnBase. Okay, Jamin, I think I am done talking. I'm going to turn it over to you. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Jack. That was an awesome overview. Um, leave it to me to 
speak to why, who is TSC and why TSC. Hopefully by now, most of you on the call are aware of who we are, but let's just recap. TSC is Technology Solutions Consultants. We were founded in 2011 by Jack as a solution provider. So we are really shamelessly obsessed with the fact that we recognize and are chartered by the fact that enterprise content management and what we do is a relationship business. All business is personal to us and that's our guiding principle that guides the whole team. Um, the team is comprised of a team of experts that are recognized in our industry. We've been around doing this for a while. The minimum of about 10 years is required to be on the team and a lot of us have much more than that, but we'll stop at that. Uh, some of the highlights of the core strengths of the team that we've accumulated here are at the bottom of the screen and I won't read through all of them but let's suffice to say that we aren't a hammer and everything doesn't look like a nail we're able to take that tool set and that expertise and experience across platform and really develop some neat solutions that are the right fit for each use case Jack So that's who, what about the why? And again, I won't read through all this for you, but this is something we've put together because there's a few key things that we feel like are important. Um, first and foremost, like I just mentioned, we're really focused on making sure that the right solution at the right time and the right fit and the right scope is a priority. So we're never going to sit there and try to build something without understanding what the need is and what the scope is. And we have partner agreements, we're an independent consultant, so we can pull multiple tools from our tool belt that allows us to really be consultative and bring that expertise, which is the second part of this, to the table that we talked about. A combination of those two allows us to really stay customer first in partnership. Uh, all of our customers really expect us to be honest, to provide cost-effective solutions and a level of technical excellence and partnership that goes above and beyond. And uh, if we don't, Jack hears about it and uh, we hear about it. So you can guarantee that's gonna happen. The lastly, the final thing that we'd like to talk about about why TSC is support. We really recognize that uh, getting lost in a black hole of support just is not fun for anyone. And so we're really focused on making sure that when you're uh, supported by TSC, our team supporting you is going to know your environment, know you, and we're going to be able to provide you a speedy resolution to whatever may be happening in your environment because software isn't perfect, but we sure try to make it be. And you don't have to take our word for it, Jack. You can talk about looking at uh, one of our customers. Lindsay, we appreciate the quote if you're on. This is a quote from one of our customers who found that uh, while OnBase was great to work in, they kind of felt like a bit little fish in a big pond with previous support. Whereas with TSC, they feel like they get that dedicated, focused partnership uh, combined with best practices and expertise that really are enabling them to uh, envision a much broader roadmap and ROI adoption. And with that, I would like to turn it over to our sponsor today. So Scott, if you're still with us after all of that, I appreciate it. Would you like to share with us a little bit about Fujitsu? Certainly, thank you, Jamin and Jack. I'm Scott Francis from Fujitsu. We are a proud partner with TSC, working with them for over 10 years. And Jack, I really think you did a great job describing how TSC can unlock and unleash the functionality of Highland OnBase to really deliver productivity. We're focusing on HR today, but it is great across the enterprise. So with Highland OnBase, we also have a very long relationship and we have more scanners in use with Highland customers than any other scanner manufacturer. And that's simply because of performance. We realize that your knowledge workers, including HR professionals, have a day job that is critical to the success of the company. Our job is to make the scanning experience quick, easy, reliable, and secure. Simply put, Fujitsu scanners get the job done the first time and every time, and our reliability is second to none. We routinely hear from customers that have been using our scanners for over 10 years, and that is a testament to our product's reliability. So that ease of use, again, it's all about making the scanning experience quick and easy, and we also have a wide variety of solutions that I'll get into on the next slide, and working with TSC, we can combine to give you great performance and support. So on the next slide, you can see our whole family of scanners. So regardless of your use case or use cases, we have the right scanner for you. 
we make a wide variety of units that can do everything from back file conversion for production scanning to desktop scanning, which is great for HR professionals. And we back that up with our service and support. So moving forward on the next slide, we're gonna talk about our FI-800R. And this is a great scanner for HR because it's small and reliable. So you can see on the right, it actually has a dual feed system with our doc feeder. Documents go in and they come out the front center of the unit and that allows you to use the scanner without clearing out the space in front of it. Or if you'd like to use the front manual feeder, those documents come in and come right back out to the user and it can be used with the scanner open or closed. These just basically combine to make the functional footprint smaller. We know desktop space is crowded and we know with HR applications, we're scanning a lot of documents that are certainly confidential and they've got a lot of details like wet signatures on those authorization forms or when you're interviewing your employees and you're taking notes on paper and you want to scan that into the system our image quality is adaptive so we're looking at every page and every section of the page to bring out all of the details so when you scan documents you can rest assured that all of the information is being captured which is very important for compliance and mitigating legal risk. The scanner is great for all kinds of applications that Jack talked about for human resources, employee onboarding, uh, records management, any type of HR workflows we can capture paper fast. And as Jack mentioned, once you get that paper out of the file cabinet, you can make it work for you. And of course, protecting confidential information is important. When you store those HR documents in a locked file cabinet, they might be secure at that point. But when you need to access that information, it takes a long time to retrieve, and that information is at risk until it goes back in that locked file cabinet. When we digitize documents, get them into the on-base system, it's the information is available for all of the employees with secure access to really accelerate all of those workflows. And Scott, the, yeah. the 800R, it, it does a good job with like uh, ID cards, right? And different things. Great point. So for that um, employee onboarding experience, any type of identification document that is used uh, during that process can be fed through the front feeder of RFI 800R and we can scan documents up to five millimeters thick. So if someone brings in a passport, no problem. You can put it right through that front feeder. If it's a driver's license, any type of ID card is gonna scan perfectly with the FI-800R and we'll do an auto crop. So we'll just capture the actual document details and we'll use all that image processing to bring out the details. Great point, Jack. Here at Fujitsu, we take high-end scanner features and we bring them down to our desktop devices to really make that scanning experience fast, reliable, and easy for the user. So you can see that we've got some unique operation with that dual feed system. You can choose which one that you'll use for each scanning job. You can even combine both. So if someone brings in a driver's license as well as a packet of documents, you can scan the driver's license with the front feeder, scan that packet of documents with the ADF, all in the same file. And it's perfectly supported through OnBase with our PaperStream IP Twain drivers. For paper handling, we have some really cool high-end features like active se separation and mechanical de -skew. So again, this just brings, um, it makes that scanning experience easy. And best yet, on the next slide, you can see that one of today's attendees uh, can win an FI-800R, so you can see firsthand how great our technology is. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. And let's talk quickly about uh, next 
webinar series and we want to hear from you. So if anything today uh, seemed like it was interesting to you and you would like to deep dive further, we covered a lot of ground in HR and for better or for worse, there are a lot of depth places that we could have stopped and spent more time. But Jack, great job on giving us a high level and hopefully it sparked some uh, imagination and some innovation ideas that you might have in your organization. We'd love to hear from you on that. Join us next time and here's the next couple webinars we have coming up. Unity API and the TSE REST API wrapper is in December, public defenders special use cases in January, and an ECM 101 roadmap and paperless efficiency focus for February. We have more topics coming, but Heather would love to hear from you if you've got ideas about what you'd like to see on our radar. And with that, I think that wraps our agenda for the today. So thank you everyone for joining us and don't forget to join us next time because at TSC we exist to help you achieve the most from your on-base investment. Thanks and have a great afternoon.